Hello and welcome. My name is Dom Hale for Mining Journal, Mining Magazine, and Australia Mining Monthly. I'm here with Peter Chapman, Technical Director and Manager for Mine Waste at WSP Australia, and Sean Wells, Technical Excellence and Innovation Lead at WSP Canada. Today we're here to talk about tailings and specifically the change in the industry towards risk-informed decisions and the technology that supports that. Peter, Sean, hello. It's great to have you here. Good morning. Thank you. Nice to be here. Peter, let me start by asking you, in respect of design, construction, operation, transition, and closure of tailing storage facilities, in your view, is the mining industry shifting towards risk-informed decisions and technology at a pace and scale which indicates the issue is being taken sufficiently seriously? Thanks, Om. Yeah, it's a very interesting question. The risk-informed design process is certainly a focus nowadays, and uh, that's really great to see. The pace is very much dictated by the global tailing standard and the compliance deadlines, um, and that is really a consequence-based process at the moment. So while risk-informed design is, is certainly where we want to be as an industry, at the moment we're stepping through the, uh, the processes to meet the global tailing standard. The scale is very much dictated by those who have signed up to ICMM uh, and is starting to continue into other miners as well. But the pace could, could be a bit quicker and it could be uh, focused on a little bit more from risk rather than consequences for each facility. And Sean, what's your view on whether real change is afoot? Yeah, thank you. I, the, in my perspective, the operators are actually taking this quite seriously. Uh, there's been significant work put into implementation of the standard and the change over to risk-informed decisions. Uh, I think the pace could be a little faster than it is, but what's holding us back is the level of expertise and history in running mining operations with this type of risk-informed decision. It's taking a very long, uh, a very great amount of effort to understand what it takes to move to this new regime. And there isn't a lot of history over the last centuries of running these mines in learning what works and what doesn't work. So we're doing the best we can with the people that we have. Uh, and I think it is it is building quite well and it is um, moving the industry towards a very positive change. Understood. So staying with you, Sean, what new technologies in development to manage risks associated with tailings are you most excited about? And, and which technologies already being used in mining and other sectors would you say could and should be further built upon? I think historically, a lot of the technologies that we've used specifically for monitoring of facilities have been very, very much based on the, the design work that was done and installation of items like piezometers and inclinometers and uh, uh, remote sensing was done more to monitor the activity the activities or the behavior of the structure than necessarily targeting a specific risk. So with the work that's gone on to move towards risk informed, we're able to directly target uh, what are the risks and what monitoring uh, technologies do we need to either implement, implement differently or develop new uh, to make sure that we're addressing the specific risks that, that we're identifying through this process. The area that I'm most excited about right now uh, is related to the higher end implementation of remote sensing. A lot of these facilities are very difficult to monitor uh, on foot or with a single point uh, monitoring technology. Uh, they can be quite remote uh, so the more that we can make use of things like satellite technology, uh, inspection technologies related to uh, drone uh, flights, um, but any of these technologies that get us towards wide area monitoring to look for differences and look for changes are, are some of the areas that I'm most excited by. Great stuff. 
Uh, so, Peter, what innovations would you like to draw attention to? From my side, I agree with Sean on the technology. There's some amazing things happening in terms of remote sensing and monitoring, but also in the deordering field, it's quite interesting at the moment. There's a lot of focus on the continuum of getting to thickened tailings and uh, through to dewatered or filtered tailings, but using different approaches. Um, solid bulb centrifuge is probably a key one for me at the moment. It's coming up uh, a lot further. It's a innovative way of getting to a moisture content that's still reasonable for what we need and we can design to it, but doesn't necessarily need to go all the way to fully filtered to a cake product. Uh, so there's some really good advances in that dewatering technology. And if we can manage those and implement those from a generation of tailings perspective, and then within the, the facility, link the monitoring to the failure modes, as Sean was discussing, I think we're moving ahead in the right direction. Understood. And so, Peter, what specific tailings risks would you point to as being particularly difficult to monitor where you'd consider current available technologies to be inadequate to manage those risks? One of the biggest things that's challenging at the moment is to understand the state at which the tailings is within the facility. We can test it for its uh, penetration resistance and other parameters, but it is very challenging to understand its um, its static shear bias within the actual tailings mass. Uh, it gets very technical in terms of that side, but the the challenge is that we are still figuring out exactly where the material starts. It uh, starts its journey. From that perspective, it means that we make some assumptions, very reasonable assumptions based on the data that we have, and we use uh, conservative parameters to adjust that, but it's all related to its potential for uh, liquefaction to occur. If we can improve our intrusive investigation techniques and understand the, the material state as it evolves over time, that will be a big step forward for us. And Sean, what risks would you say are most challenging to monitor? From a technical standpoint, it's when we're looking at um, a failure profile uh, for a lot of these incidents where a failure in a structure can occur, start at a very small scale. Uh, so something like internal erosion or piping failures, those are areas where it starts on the centimeter scale. And most of the monitoring technologies that we have available to us right now can really only pick these failures up once they've become much more obvious. So larger scale, larger water flows. And by that point, uh, in a lot of cases, we can be in a situation where the failure is actually progressing and it's more difficult to, to stop or control. So tech, one of the biggest areas that, that we've been looking for over the last, uh, the last couple of years is technologies that can help us locate these potential failures at much smaller scales and help us build the confidence that we know that the, whether or not some, there's an ongoing, ongoing failure mechanism at a very small scale when it's still at the stage that we can do something about it and keep the structure safe and stable uh, before we have to go about and um, uh, detect it with current technologies that can only find it when it's at a much larger um, scale. I will say, however, the biggest risk I have related to tailings technologies is actually the availability and knowledge of the people that we have. Uh, globally, uh, tailings professionals are stressed. Uh, we don't have enough people and enough expertise to take on a lot of this work right now. And so that a lot of our people are spending their time just doing the jobs that they have currently. There isn't a lot of time to go about and advance new things. Uh, new technology takes a lot of effort, it takes a lot of time, and it takes a lot of understanding. And the capacity of the current groups of tailings professionals uh, is not there presently. So even if we do find a new technology, getting it implemented and running is going to be uh, the biggest challenge. Okay, so Sean, do you consider the global industry standard for tailings management to be uh, a fit-for-purpose tool 
for compelling mining companies to actively adopt new levels of governance to increase the safety of telling storage facilities. I, I think the global industry standard for tailings management is is well fit for, for purpose. Uh, if with ICMM and Mac and a, a number of the operators, uh, it's ask, it's driving us to ask the right questions. It's driving us to put processes in place that I believe will significantly reduce the risks of these operations. So yes, I actually do believe it's fit for purpose. Again, the impediment to actively adopting this is related to the amount of effort it's taking companies to do that transition and the number of people that actually understand what a risk-informed uh, decision-making system is and how to make it work. And what about yourself, uh, Peter? Would you concur with that? Do you think the, the GISTM is the right tool for the job? I think it's working um, very well at the moment. The insurers and investors now have something they can look at that's at a global level. And so are you compliant? Are you following up with this? And it, it has brought the companies together. Uh, but as Sean notes, the, the human capital associated with implementing it is a challenge. Uh, there still needs to be a clear auditing process from this, and it is voluntary at the moment. As investors and insurers look for new projects going forward, they, they will certainly ask the question and uh, that will broaden its reach. Uh, but it also needs to evolve as well. We're, we're still learning. Every industry is still learning and the standard will need to evolve with, uh, with society as we keep moving forward. Well, so staying with that concept of learning, Peter, what more needs to be done to educate the industry? I think the key thing around the industry at the moment is the uh, focus on credible failure modes, but also focusing on what the right solution is for each facility, uh, each tailings management solution. Every site is different, every uh, commodity is different, and, and the site setting and the jurisdiction. So it's not a one size fits all. Um, and having a robust multi criteria options assessment considering all the different options and having a repeatable framework to be able to make a decision on what's best for the area you're in uh, is going to be key. So education needs people to be aware of the different technologies, the different techniques, the different risks, uh, and the different monitoring and instrumentation processes to, to mitigate and manage those risks where they can. Uh, the more courses, the better in terms of being able to focus on those aspects. And I think a layered approach it will be very important in terms of education and there'll be deeply technical subjects that need to be focused on but broader courses that give people awareness of the consequences of their decisions by yourself sean what more would you like to see happening on the education front do you agree that it's not about uh, singing from the same hymn sheet uh, that they the requirement is not for one size fits all solutions yeah, historically in uh, tailings facility management, uh, very similar to the geotechnical engineering world, uh, we've worked on previous examples. What, what was the best way to handle uh, a saturated sand? What is the, the, the right formulas for dealing with a particular type of soil? Uh, when when GISTM was introduced, it gave us some very good directions, but best practices haven't been nailed down for that yet. So each of the operators in, and, and I won't say rushing, but in attempting to meet some of the early deadline dates, there was not time to build industry consensus on best practices for risk identification, risk mitigation, even leveling of the understanding of risks across multiple sites. So where I think the industry education needs to go right now is we need to start talking, not just within companies and sites, but across regions, across areas, demonstrating what practices have worked, what practices still need development. We need to publish this work. We need to peer review it. 
And we need to start landing on general best practices across the industry for this risk identification and risk management. Understood. So rounding off with my final question, what do you see as the biggest challenge in achieving the ultimate goal of zero harm to people and the environment with zero tolerance for human fatality in respect of tailings management? Sean, what's your view on that? I think the biggest challenge is getting the individual practitioners the information they need to be able to be successful within this new global industry standard for tailings management. We need to develop best practices. We need to get those published, reviewed, so that they can fully understand what it takes to succeed within that management environment and to be able to have references to go back to and determine what is the safest way to run and manage my facility. And Peter, what do you consider to be the biggest challenge in getting to that state of zero harm and zero tolerance? I think one of the biggest challenges is going to be the human capital component, the people. It's a very tight market at the moment, and it's very challenging to have the engineers with the right skills to be able to contribute to all these projects. When you couple that with competing demands in terms of financial capital across mining companies, uh, there are aspects that may not be moved in the timeframes that would be an ideal scenario. So a, a challenge is first to identify the risks and have a portfolio-based approach, but then assign the limited capital, human and financial, to where it matters most. Uh, and when you look at it from a site-by-site -site basis, it will be very much look comparing to other projects on site. But if you can look at it from a portfolio basis, then you can start making big steps forward in terms of what matters. And for the larger mining companies, they've got the opportunity to do that. Well, look, thank you both, Peter Chapman and Sean Wells for WSP Enlightening Stuff. I'm Dom Hale for Mining Journal. Thanks for watching.